Good Time Crew. There have been times where wrestlers have talked during a match. <laughs> can, can, can you believe it? <laughs> can you believe it? Can you believe wrestlers that? Wrestlers talk during the match? No, I'm just kidding. Why would they but, ever do such a thing? <laughs> but what I'm trying to figure out is what kind of commands or what kind of things did they say during the match that would warrant this video being created. <laughs> well, the thing is, we're not supposed to hear them, you know, talk about whatever like they real gonna... stuff besides the stuff stuff. Well, no, I'm, I was saying like we're not supposed to hear them talk about like you know how we watch the video things that you never knew about wrestling or wrestling secrets exposed, and they said they talk about what they're gonna do, but we're not supposed to hear that. So let's find out times that we heard them talking <laughs> during the match, okay? Guys, follow along with us, please. Thank you. And subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. We love you all. A smart calling is a fundamental part of pro wrestling. It relates to the wrestlers in a match communicating with each other to make sure that the match goes as smoothly as possible. There are certain wrestlers that have mastered this craft over the years, but unfortunately, this doesn't stop even the greatest wrestlers in the world from audibly calling spots in a huge matchup. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE matches with blatant spot calling or wrestlers talking. So it's interesting. So spot calling and talking. So like commands. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling journey. videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive Simple, lists. Right? Number 10, Team WWE is? vs Team Alliance at Survivor Series 2001. And the main event of Survivor Series in 2001 featured Team WWE taking on the Alliance for the control of the entire company. And due to the chaotic nature of the match, there was a ton of spot yeah, calling. But one specific spot call in the match was extremely noticeable. When Rob Van Dam and Chris Jericho were in the match, Jericho proceeds to run into the ropes and screams at the top of his lungs. Trying to stay in the sink. And they got three. Sometimes spot calling is used when the talent aren't overly familiar with each other and seeing as RVD was relatively new to WWE at the time, it's entirely possible that Jericho and RVD weren't used to each other in the ring yet. Number 9, John Cena vs Alberto Del Rio, Hell in a Cell 2013 John Cena is perhaps the most famous spot caller of all time. In fact, one of the main criticisms of Cena's work is that he calls spots far too loudly and this has been a common trend throughout his career. Take for instance his match at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in 2013 against Alberto Del Rio. A WWE needed something special for the pay-per-view and that something special was the return of WWE's golden boy John Cena. Golden Cena was boy. going to return to the company to take on Alberto Del Rio for the world title and naturally Cena captured the world title once again. And the match itself was fine but the spot right. calling was so blatantly obvious that it distracted fans from the action taking place. At one point in the match, Cena tries to grab Del Rio's legs to apply the STF. This is when Cena shouts, match. Uh, The World Heavyweight Champions for making him look that way. Cena would directly call for Del Rio to hit him with a German suplex, which miraculously occurs just two seconds later. Uh, Number 8, Brock Lesnar vs Triple H at SummerSlam 2000. And you know what I was thinking? That actually them talking to each other can can help them flow through what they're doing better. Not only, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if I'm telling you to do a move, it's because I, I want to do this move next. Mm -hmm. You know? And then you're prepared for it. Right. Yeah. So that, that, makes a, that makes a lot of sense. But I guess if you're watching an entire match and you keep seeing him talk and yeah. say, like, attack, attack, like how they said, I think that would kind of get annoying after a while. Because you want it to feel more real than that. That's you know? true. That's true. That's weird. I didn't know that John Cena was famous for talking that much. Well, I mean, I think because he's like, because he was the number one guy at that time. Mm -hmm. He was in so many matches, so you're yeah. wrestling all these different people all the time. Yeah, so they're not used to like the guy said. They're not used then, to working together with everybody. Yeah, so you gotta hit them. But I, but if I heard somebody yell German, I wouldn't be like, "Oh, they're about to do a German suplex," you know. But maybe we're not like but, hardcore yeah, oh, fans because yeah, yeah, I feel sure. like people that are people know what's when they say stuff like that. Would you guys know? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, you they would know. Twelve. Now, throughout his legendary career, Triple H was well established for being a ring general. This meant that he was usually the one who called the action during a match. 
When Brock Lesnar returned to WWE in 2012, one of his first feuds was with Triple H, and their main event showdown at the SummerSlam pay-per-view featured a number of audible spot calls, mainly by Triple H. At one point, Triple H has to direct Lesnar to take a bump over the rope as Triple H informs Lesnar. Unloading on Lesnar. So a couple of times, Lesnar's gone for the Kimura lock and Triple H is... It's possible that Triple H felt he needed to guide Lesnar through the match due to the match only being Lesnar's second WWE match in eight years. Number 7, Roman Reigns vs John Cena at oh, SummerSlam 2021. A Roman Reigns' main event match for John Cena at the 2021 SummerSlam pay-per-view was a monumental matchup. It was established as a dream match as Reigns and Cena had never gone one-on-one -on -one whilst Reigns was portraying his acclaimed Tribal Chief persona. The match, for the most part, was well received, but this didn't mean that there wasn't more blatant spot calling from the former 16-time world champion. During the match, Reigns had a sleeper hold locked in on Cena as Cena is trying to feed off the crowd reaction. Cena then informs Reigns to... John Cena trying to power out of this sleeper hold, but now... Reigns then proceeds to jump on Cena's back, and as the two then transition into the Yay. next planned spot. Number 6, CM Punk vs Batista vs Rey Mysterio vs The Undertaker <laughs> at Bragging Rights 2009. Four WWE legends collided for the world title at the Bragging Rights pay-per-view in 2009, as the match in question was between Batista, Taker, CM Punk and Rey Mysterio. Now, towards the final stages of the match, the dead man hit a choke slam on Batista and Taker would then ask Batista if he was okay, which Batista replied with a definitive a choke slam! Oh. The animal! No. The animal then informs the Undertaker that he has to hit him with a tombstone. It was believed at the time that Batista may have suffered a minor injury, but I knew that the planned finish involved him being tombstoned, so he felt like he needed to inform Taker to the end of the match so he could be looked over by WWE's medical team. Number 5, the 2004 hey, Royal Rumble no? match. A Royal Rumble match can sometimes get complicated as wow. every wrestler has oh, to yeah, remember their specific spot great. in the match and if someone forgets their spot, it can mess up the entire match. During the 2004 Royal Rumble, the Big Show had to inform the talent left in the match how the next sequence in the match was going to go oh down. Gosh. As a remainder of the talent in the match attempted to lift Big Show off the mat, you could hear the Big Show say, Show would then eliminate mm. Cena, then RVD, in the exact order that he had just audibly called. The eliminations would have been worked out ahead of time, so it's likely that someone in the match forgot what order the eliminations were supposed to come. This forced Big Show to do an audible and extremely loud spot call to get the match back on track. Number 4, The Big Show vs. It's funny because I actually didn't hear that when they played that clip. I didn't hear yeah, that at all. Yeah, I feel like it's weird because when we were watching wrestling, like when we watch it on TV, mm -hmm. I feel like we can see and hear a lot more clearly than we're seeing it right now. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting how they have to keep on going with the show. Because I just I just thought about that. Yeah. When they showed Undertaker versus Batista, he was like, you have to do the tombstone because that's his finishing move. Mm-hmm to hurry up and end the match. Yeah. So it's interesting that even though he was hurt, he's like, we still got to do this. Yeah, that like, hurt. you got to get up. We'll check on you later. Are you okay? No, but hurry up and, and do what you got to do. Yeah. Because the show must go on. We still got to put on a good match. And we still got to take up time doing right. things. Right, and you heard what he just said about the elimination order. <laughs> if people forget the order, that, that gets really tricky. I mean, it's like putting on a theater production not forgetting your lines you yeah know? i mean i think that I, I it's interesting i love watching these videos guys and i love talking about it i know too, me too because now it's got my brain working because now i'm like oh okay so they have a sequence of things that are supposed to happen during the match mm -hmm. but it's not all planned out it's just like this is how it finishes at some point in time you need to make sure to do this mm -hmm. and you know, we'll try to coach each other to give them a really good show. Yeah. But it's like, this is how it ends. It ends with me or you doing this. Yeah. And it's like with John Cena. They said that John Cena was trying to go based off the crowd's energy. Yeah. Because if the crowd is super hype, well, you don't want to, like, do the next planned move if that's not the hypest thing. It's like, no, 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 we need to go to this next. Yeah, we need to make this bigger. Jump on my back. Make it really look, yeah. really sell this thing. Yeah, I see why they got to talk so much. Yeah. Triple H on Raw in 1999. Speaking of the seven foot tall Big Show, in late 1999 he received a huge push and would win the title at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. 
The Big Show would then work a rivalry with Triple H that was predominantly on television, and in one specific match between the two, Triple H went overboard on the loud spot calling. As Triple H was intimidating referee Tim White in the corner, Triple H would scream, How did he do that? And Triple H cannot believe it! Side slam! Okay, that was it was overly blatant and hard to ignore. The two would go on to work with each other rather frequently over their careers, so the noticeable spot calling likely came down to their inexperience with working with one another. Yeah. Number 3. The Undertaker vs Edge at WrestleMania 24 A lot of secret communication between wrestlers goes on whilst they're tied like up in the this. turnbuckle. As their faces are usually covered, they can have a quick conversation and discuss their next spot. Take for instance the main event of WrestleMania 24. It featured Edge defending the world title against The Undertaker in a tremendous WrestleMania main event. Audible spot calling is actually really limited in the match, which is a credit to the talent involved, oh, cool. but there is one specific moment in the match where The Undertaker calls a spot louder than he's ever called a spot before. As the dead man proceeds to throw Edge into the turnbuckle, he shouts out, Undertaker can really take his time with Edge here tonight. Oh, he's got it. Sometimes spot calling can be avoided, and on this occasion, this was likely one of the spots which was improvised in the match itself, rather than a spot that was planned ahead of time. Number 2. The 2007 Royal Rumble Match well, That year's Royal Rumble match featured a star-studded lineup, including the likes of The Undertaker, Randy Orton, and Shawn Michaels. One of the most infamous spots in the match occurred just before The Undertaker made his entrance. The Great Khali had entered the match and cleared hey, house, Khali, and he then began to taunt the crowd, ready for the Ooh. dead man to make his entrance. The issue here was that Khali was supposed to do his signature taunt towards the hard camera side of the arena, but Khali clearly got confused. Wrestling legend HBK had no choice but to point oh. towards the hard camera side of the arena and shout, but at least. <laughs> I'm afraid this. <laughs> Good it was so him. obvious was what saying. HBK was communicating to Carly, but it's a good job he did, otherwise the preceding spot, which was to see The Undertaker make his entrance to take out the 7 foot tall Carly, wouldn't have had the same effect. Yeah, and number 1. The Rock vs John Cena uh -oh. at WrestleMania 28 uh -oh. On WrestleMania 28's main event saw The Rock take on John Cena in an epic dream match that fans never thought was ever going to be possible, even though it happened twice. The match was great from an in-ring point of view, but The Rock had a little ring rust which was easy to understand after he spent so long away from the <laughs> ring. Interestingly, although the spot calling was frequent in the match, it looked like The Rock was actually the one who called the match. At one point, Cena has a bear hug locked in on the Great One, and The Rock asks Cena if he wants to do the DDT. The Rock then battles out of the bear hug and performs a trademark DDT, just as he said. But luckily, the spot calling didn't take anything away from the quality of the match, as the match is still fondly remembered as being one of the most memorable main events in WWE WrestleMania history. Uh, well, there you have it, folks. 10 WWE That's so totally interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. That's so interesting. That was really clear, him saying that one. You want a DDT? Yeah, that was really... Like, okay, but I think it would be... I'm telling you, when we were watching wrestling, it was that one time we were watching, and we were like, man, it's so clear mm -hmm. compared to how it used to be, and it was like so clear to the point where you can see the moves and how they're blocking them and stuff yeah. like that. And I feel like we could hear them talking. I don't think I would have noticed something like this, but we could definitely hear them talking. Yeah, I mean, you can normally hear some of the things they're saying. I think it would be interesting. Uh, I wonder why they don't have code words for it. Like, I guess, finisher, so, you know, yeah. well, um, German? pin. Apparently that's a code word. Yeah, but that's a move. Yeah, I, but, but I, I mean, guess it's code But like, what if it's something like, you know, like if, the, if the finisher is supposed to be whatever move, mm -hmm. you know, why don't you say, I agree! Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, if like, I say green, like, that's the, the, the go ahead for the end. But that can be confused for, like, you know, but nobody, pain or like, ah! Then, yeah, but know. nobody thinks that I'm saying green. Exactly. And then I just do it, and then I don't end up in some YouTuber's video. <laughs> or some, and then some YouTube couple reacted to their video yeah. of the time that I said this because what I said is, you know, immortalized. That's true. <laughs> You're so right. I guess, well, I don't know. I guess, because this was my question. He was talking about people working together. And I was thinking, like, maybe they don't do that because not enough people work together yeah. to be able to go over that. But then when he was saying they're oh, not comfortable true. with each other, I'm like, so when do they get comfortable with each other? Is it only in the ring? Well, they might have a day or so prior to, get, to get it together. Do they have, like, do they 
rehearse the day before, you know? I'm sure, the training and rehearsing. Guys, let us know. If you have some information, let yeah. us know on this thing because that's why we have been reacting to a lot of wrestling because it's a good chance to get some education yeah. on something that we're really actually interested in doing Seriously. and learning ourselves. We're going to go to one of these wrestling schools. We're going to vlog the whole thing. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Be so but great. before we do that, we, we I like watching these first and then also, you know, I'm working out behind the scene. Don't oh, shank him up. I will not baby. stop working out, you guys. I got I to gotta get back. And he's wearing a black t-shirt, so that means that you can't and, see exactly. And a very exactly. baggy black t-shirt at that. Yeah, but you know, black, it, you know, it doesn't make you look as buff as you are right now. Yeah, yeah, so I'm juicing up a little bit. I'm wearing bit. black too. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, check that out, by the way. Um, so anyway, guys, we're going to get out of here. Yeah. Give us the information you have. Let us know what we're doing next. And, you know how uh, it goes. Hey, man, we'll see you tomorrow. Because it's every day, every bro. Day. Subscribe, subscribe. Every day, bro. I, I wish that song wasn't so cringe so we can actually It is it. so cringe. It's every oh. day, bro. It's every day, Y'all know bro. what we're talking about. Put it, I know you Sing know. every day, bro. We have been uploading videos every day. Oh, excuse me. Okay, we're done. Time to go to bed. Time to cut me. All right. It I'm is time my, to go to bed, y'all. It's late. I'm putting my headphones on. I'm watching SpongeBob. Y'all can do something else. Yeah. You're just going to leave them like that? Uh-huh, yeah. I'm done. <sighs>